Good morning, here we are again with Pepperstrel's Tina Tomasek to talk a little bit about the aerodynamics of the aircraft. Tina, can you please explain uh, a little bit of information in uh, easy to understand terms, please? I will try. Um, obviously, Pantera is a very sleek, uh, well-packaged aeroplane, but the aerodynamic features uh, extend far beyond this, uh, this outside shape or the overall major lines, which you notice immediately. Uh, lots of the attention was paid to the, to the front of the aeroplane to minimize cooling drag. People don't realize it, but uh, if you want to cool the, the engine compartment efficiently, you need to first slow down the air, make it do its job, cool the engine, and then speed it up again. So we've uh, decided on a special arrangement of three openings in the front, and the outlet is at the side of the at the side of the engine compartment, side of the fuselage, um, which helps to extract the air more efficiently. Uh, over the wing, there is an area of low pressure, which essentially sucks the air out at a high angle of attack condition, which means during climb, this is where the aeroplane operates at a high power regime, and this is where the most cooling is required. So the cooling openings are usually bigger, but here, thanks to this solution, uh, we can make them smaller and effectively lower the drag. So what you're saying is by lowering the pressure over the wing, it's a low pressure area, you're actually using that to help exhaust the air out of the... Uh, Correct. The suction the over the wing is also sucking the warm air from the cowling, and the bottom side of the cowling is completely closed and conforms to the shape of the fuselage. There's and no steps and no outlets. I notice we have quite a large outlet here. Yeah, obviously the outlet uh, is um, always bigger than the than the inlets. It has to do with slowing up, it's speeding, slowing down, and speeding up the airflow for cooling. Undercarriage is also immediately visible. Um, it's a retractable gear made of titanium. Uh, but not only that, um, there is a series of doors with an elaborate mechanism which closes up the compartment fully so there is nothing sticking out on the bottom side of the fuselage as well uh, when the landing gear is retracted. When the landing gear is open, all these doors contribute to drag which you need to slow the aeroplane down and uh, make it land on a short distance. I've had some questions about uh, does the aircraft have speed brakes? But what you're saying about uh, the different panels creating drag when you end the carriage down uh, pretty much eliminates a completely extra system for the aircraft. Correct. The um, first aeroplane is not equipped with speed brakes. We do have a possibility to include them should this be necessary, but if you take a look at how the front wheel covers are arranged, they are in the shape of the speed brake with uh, quite a large effective area, so uh, lowering the landing gear will contribute to increasing drag for approach by a quite significant measure. Um, we're here at the left-hand wingtip of the Pantera, which is a uh, a very noticeable design feature, but it was also sculpted and shaped to minimize induced drag on, uh, on climb and approach regime, as well as stay uh, aerodynamically clean on cruise. As uh, true to Pipistrel's philosophy, none of the elements are sticking out. So uh, together with, um, with a company from the Slovak Republic, FAR Engineering, we've uh, worked out a completely conforming wingtip uh, nav strobe and recognition light. So it is hidden in the shape of the wingtip and doesn't produce any extra drag. It looks really cool. Uh, here you can also see how clean, uh, how cleaned up the wing is, uh, both on the top and on the bottom, and all of this contributes to the overall very low drag characteristics of the aeroplane. In fact, on the bottom side where you typically find uh, outside braces and hinges for the flaps, uh, we have nothing to show because all is internal and nothing is creating extra drag. We're standing here just below the typical T-tail of Pipistrel. Pantera is uh, carrying a um, high-flying T-tail, uh, as you can see, and we often get asked why do we use a T-tail, simply because we believe it's uh, aerodynamically superior. Uh, our tails are flying really high, so they are always in uh, undisturbed air, even in a high angle of attack situation. Um, the progress of acquiring lift on takeoff is gradual, so the control feel arrives gradually, not suddenly, as it's typical with the classic tail. Uh, when you push power and the airflow from the prop hits the tail and uh, it also allows um, a better aerodynamic execution because you don't have any interference drag or very little interference drag on top of the, of the fin. 
So effectively you have two, only two tips sticking out on the tail, which would be the left and the right hand side of the horizontal stabilizer. The tip of the vertical stabilizer is closed up with the fairing to the tail. Uh, we've also worked out a series of clever solutions. Let's say the ELT antenna is hidden um, beneath this, this aft panel, which is made of fiberglass. The rest of the fuselage is made of uh, carbon fiber. We have an impact skid down on the bottom to protect your tail should you, should you bump it into the ground. And we have totally conforming uh, lights here, the navigation light and the red strobe. On the, on the tail and the rudder respectively. One of the other benefits of having a, a, a tea tail like this, and it's probably eight feet above ground level, is it completely eliminates stone chips. Exactly, and it also makes the pre-flight check much easier because you can access all the important things and check them visually uh, without climbing on top or bumping into any structures. The aircraft is still well enough balanced that you can uh, push down on the fuselage and uh, lower the aircraft to inspect uh, um, on top of the uh, tail as well. Absolutely, it has to do with the positioning of the landing gear. Uh, the landing gear is a trailing link um, suspension on all three main landing gear legs. This means you can use it on uh, unprepared terrains. I will not say rugged, but grass is completely fine. And uh, the idea was to have a very low force required to, to lower the tail so you can lift up that nose wheel as soon as possible during the takeoff run uh, to take off in the shortest possible what do you uh, expect the uh, ground roll to be on, say, on say a normal tarmac airfield? On a normal ta tarmac airfield with the maximum load around 1,000 feet, maybe 1,100 feet, uh, on a typical load, two people and let's say three quarters of fuel, you would be seeing distances of about 750 feet of Which roll. Which is a uh, very respectable performance figures. It is. It's a light aeroplane. Uh, the wing produces lots of lift, especially when the flaps are in takeoff position. Uh, the power to weight ratio is uh, is tremendous with this aeroplane. And the uh, a really important feature for this category and class of aircraft is the ability to have a ballistic parachute. And uh, that's pretty much standard with all fitness tool aircraft. And uh, we can just walk down and have a look. And can you explain how the parachute is anchored to the airframe? Absolutely. And how the uh, airframe would be positioned when it's the parachute is activated? We have the parachute rescue system on the Pantera as part of the standard equipment. Not, not because we think the aeroplane isn't aer uh, aerodynamically sane, but because we believe that there are situations where only a parachute rescue system can save you. For example, a mid-air collision, an engine failure at night time on an unlit terrain, um, an engine failure over water. It's far safer to land in water than to ditch the aeroplane in the classic way because you don't get turned over. Uh, the parachute itself is anchored to the fuselage in three points. All the straps are hidden inside this bracing roll bar that you can see. So the straps come down to the main wing uh, connection in this area and one goes forward towards the engine mount. All this serves the purpose that the aeroplane, once the parachute is, uh, is extracted and inflated, it descends under a nor normal angle in the exact same way as you see it now. So it's not inclined forward or backward. Some aircraft manufacturers uh build their aircraft that if the parachute is deployed it basically writes off the airframe. Not so with Pippa Yeah, there, there, are, there is some damage involved, absolutely. Um, we need to hide the straps completely in order to keep aerodynamic efficiency, uh, but none of the important structures are damaged. So, so um, it's completely repairable. Absolutely, it's completely repairable. We have special channels uh, engineered inside, so the things that would be torn, on, uh, off, uh, torn off during the uh, activation actually help absorb the energy associated to the inflation shock. Uh, and are totally repairable. So um, we anticipate, uh, as as far as the uh, the landing itself is on a normal terrain, let's say it's not in the woods or on rocky terrain, the aeroplane be fully repaired and uh, flying again. So you're saying that uh, because the straps are buried into the fuselage structure somewhat, it would uh, reduce the opening impact of, of the chute inflation, Absolutely. which would make it uh, much nicer for the occupants. Well, if you can use the word nicer, yes. that would be it, absolutely. Um, it was designed to reduce the shock uh, and also to have a more gradual um, distribution of the shock force from the canopy itself towards the fuselage. Now, just uh, to wrap up today's interview, you have some good news from last night, I hear, with uh, an award being presented to the uh, Panthera. Pantera was a 
awarded with the best four-seater concept by the Germany's leading uh, aviation magazine called the Flieger magazine. Uh, people who want to see the award, we have it here at the stand. We're extremely proud because the competition was harsh. Uh, we beat Cessna TTX, the Corvallis TTX, as well as the Flight Design C4. And I believe there were some accolades also for the Virus SW. Correct. Pipistrel competed or was nominated in two categories. And the Virus SW100, the flagship model uh, from the um, two-seat two -seat offerings of Pipistrel, was nominated as one of the top three microlights or light sport airplanes of the year 2012. Tina Tomasik, thank you very much. You are welcome.